welcome to Regarding Change. My name is Allison Whiteacre, and each week I have a conversation with an extraordinary everyday person about major changes they've made in their life. This week's transformer is Kalki Subramaniam. Hi, Kalki. Hi. Hi, Allison. Welcome, welcome to Regarding Change. So let me tell you a little bit about Kalki. Kalki Subramaniam is a celebrated Indian transgender activist, artist, poet, actor, and inspirational speaker. Kalki is the founder of Sahadari Foundation for Queer Arts and Culture. Founded in 2008, it is a pioneering organization in India that has initiated some of the creative and inspiring queer art, literature, and film projects that have inspired social change in the country. So Kalki, tell us about the major transition that you went through when you left the corporate world. I think uh, um, the decision that I should leave the corporate world came um, after I did my gender reassignment surgery. The whole point of, for me, working in the corporate itself was to earn some money to support my gender reassignment surgery. But otherwise, I was not at all interested in working in a corporate world. Why I that transition happened is because right from my childhood, I've always seen our community people. Right from the age of 13, I've uh, I know the transgender community and the kind of uh, ostracization and discrimination our community goes through, I've seen it in my own eyes. Many of my friends uh, leaving their homes, thrown out of their homes, uh, running away to other towns to survive. But I, since I was the fortunate one, I was uh, fortunate one because I was accepted by my family and had fortune to study education and all that. I decided to leave corporate world and embrace the transition is because uh, I felt that I need to make a change to the uh, to the misery of our community. I need to make a drastic change uh, socially as well as legally uh, for a much more equality and rights. So the, leaving the corporate world was a, a, a life-changing uh, transition for me because that ch that moment changed and gave me the vision what I should really be doing um, to our community. I have to stand up for our community. I was a few people, I was one of the few people who was already empowered because my family accepted me. I had a good, good education. I had the knowledge and the will to do it. So... I think that was a very important transition point in my life, leaving the corporate world, embracing what I really wanted to do, make a change. I, I imagine that there was a lot of transgender people that you knew who didn't have the support of their family. That's very true. Because um, almost all my friends uh, had to leave their homes because of familial uh, cultural system circumstances, family circumstances. Maybe they had a younger sister who needs to be married and their transition will be a, a big taboo in the family. So they had to leave mm -hmm. and or their father or a brother did not accept or an extended relative was uh, actually giving so much pressure to the family about her transition. Mm -hmm. So there were several reasons for uh, trans people to leave their families. More than that, to be chased away from their families. So this was becoming uh, a road to exploitation. The community became on the streets, I mean, started to live uh, with other trans people and started to beg and do sex work. So, which ultimately is the bottom line of the society, how we are treated, how we live, the quality of life, everything changes drastically to downgrade, drastic downgrade. Yeah, this needs to be changed, yeah. And I was doing my best to do that change. What do you think it was about your upbringing that gave you that empowerment? How come you got so lucky with your parents and your family? So my mom was a very sharp and intelligent as well as a kind woman. So I, I took a lot of my qualities from her, uh, her upbringing. Um, and she wasn't, kind of a person who would sit and um, 
brood about what happened to her life, rather she would take an action. So I think I got that from her, that upbringing from my mother. Uh, during my early transition, my father passed away uh, wow. because of uh, cardiac arrest. So he was never really there to actually see me transition completely. Um, he knew that I was actually moving around with a lot of uh, Thirunanga and Hijra community, the local trans women, mm -hmm. and he was so embarrassed about it. But he never questioned me on my face. He always spoke about that to my mother. And my father has never hit me um, or something like that. He was very, very dominant, but uh, he wasn't that type who would actually hurt his children. I love my father and mother. Yeah, it sounds like it. You're, you're very fortunate there. Yeah. And it's also um, fortunate for other transgender people in your community because of you creating the Sahadari Foundation. How did, how did things unfold from there? I think after uh, leaving corporate world, I went to uh, Auroville, an international township, an experimental town where people from all over the world actually settled and lived and tried to form a different society. So it was, it's a very beautiful experimental town. So once when I went to a temple with our transgender gang, I met a group of musicians, young musicians who became my best friends and still today they are. This was like exactly 20 years ago. So I, when I left the corporate world, uh, they already knew my gender uh, dysphoria and my gender status. These eight men, they invited me to work with them uh, in this musical project and they were in Oroville. So I was getting only 25% of what I was being paid in, uh, in the corporate world. Yet I had uh, the freedom, liberty, and uh, much more than that, people around me were accepting. So it was an environment, even though money was less, but happiness was more. So I went there, I learned acting, I learned a lot about music. I learned so much of uh, uh, climate change, spirituality, uh, consciousness, many, many things I learned from people, mm -hmm. not really from the place, from people who visited, who were already right. there and all that. And that actually uh, gave me the confidence too in, um, it was like more like a school that gave me the confidence to go out of Auroville and prepare for my uh, mission. So after uh, I just lived for one and a half years there and then I left Auroville, I came back to my home. I started Sahodri Foundation. Uh, during this period, I was also running a magazine called Sahodri, the first Tamil magazine and the first Indian vernacular magazine for transgender community. So that magazine's name was Sahodri. Later, we made it into an organization and we did a lot of things. I went to Chennai. I lived there for five years. I was invited by so many organizations and educational institutions. I was invited by media houses to speak about gender rights because uh, before how this happened is because of my magazine and how what I wrote in online in both English as well as in Tamil languages. I wrote in regional language too. So that reached people and that changed, uh, that invited me to many places. And then I met the ministers, the Supreme Court Judiciary, and um, I had uh, advocated and lobbied with the Supreme Court Judiciary in a major way. So many, so many things in the five years. And that led to a major change in the Supreme Court verdict. Yeah, that's a very big story. Yeah, in 2014, the Supreme Court of India yeah. legally recognized transgender people's civil rights. Yeah, I'm just blown away by all the things that you've done. Where did the art start coming into it where you started to incorporate the art? Art started from here, yeah. from my heart. Uh, maybe here. <laughs> art, art from your heart, wherever your heart is. Art from my heart. Yeah. I think um, right from my childhood when I was actually going through a lot of uh, bullying at school, I have no friends. So I used to fear going school, going to school. So I ran away to the parks and forest and I hid un under the trees. Uh, I still had my school notebooks and pens, right? So I would take a notebook 
and then I would actually draw. And I used to write about who I want to be. I used to write poetry and I used to draw the person I wanted to be. I was, I was drawing a beautiful girl with a long skirt, a beautiful gown, you know, Met Gala kind of gown that I was wearing and all these things I used to draw. So for me, the expression of myself was actually happening through painting and drawing. I, I visualized it through mm -hmm. my uh, pencil and paper and all that. That was the uh, starting point of my art. And, and then uh, for many years, I was working for our community. Uh, and in 2017, I decided to take it up seriously and enter into art world. I did my first art show in March 2017. And since then, uh, there is no stopping. I bought that art into our Sahudri Foundation too. So I've, I've given um, workshops to more than 500 trans people across India. Many of them are continuing to produce art and we try to sell those art uh, and make money and give the money completely 100% to the community people. That's called the Trans Hearts Project. And in Sahodri Foundation, we also have another project, the Red Wall Project, uh, through which we encourage the community to speak about the sexual violence that happened to them. Mm -hmm. uh, we ask them to write it on a piece of paper and then uh, they are encouraged to put a red paint on their palm and they put the red impression on their writing and collect all this for more than 500 trans people. We have collected these testimonials and we put it in universities and colleges in their walls. And then students are invited to discuss about uh, what they have read it because they have read about, they read about the violent incidences that happen to trans community. We don't invite students to sympathize with us, rather empathize with us, understand our life and uh, treat us equally, treat us with dignity and respect. That is what uh, this project is all about. And it's also a, a, a voice, it gives a voice for the community to speak about uh, the injustices happen to them. So in a way we are doing justice in a very powerful way through art. I, right now I've been doing it in India, the Red World Project, but I wanted to uh, do is across countries, uh, different in Europe, in uh, Asia, other parts of Asia and in, uh, in, in Central America and South and North, as well as uh, in, uh, if I think Africa needs to be documented because we have very less stories from Africa, but more incidences uh, of trans people being bullied and, you know, going through a lot of uh, uh, experiences in Africa that need to be documented. It's a tough job. It is a tough job. And I don't know if I would ever be able to complete it, but I have hope that I would, uh, I'm trying to give a voice to our community uh, to document these stories. I think it's so important that speak about, they speak about their lives. Not everyone gets an opportunity. Uh, the media doesn't talk to every trans woman. So I try to talk to them. I try to bring their stories, uh, which need to be heard, which definitely need to be heard. Yeah. So that is, my, that is one of my future things that I would be doing. I think certainly our community uh, will have justice in the future and will live with dignity in the future. We, will, we all work for that. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, I, I'm hopeful. It appears to be heading in that direction. Um, so I was just wondering, uh, what is something that used to scare you, but now empowers you? There are so many things that scared me, but do not scare me anymore. Uh, one incident I would like to actually say is that when I was studying in uh, my college days, when I was staying in a hostel, I was actually put up in a male hostel uh, because uh, my parents put me in a male hostel, boys hostel. Um, those were the days of my transitioning and gender confusion and all that. I went through a severe bullying at the hostel to the extent of sexual harassment and all that. Oh. Almost 60% almost of the boys somehow sexually harassed me. You know, out of 75, almost 40 students uh, were somehow bullying and um, using, uh, passing sexual passes and sexual harassment happened to me. But um, I feared it. I was afraid. I was shaking up inside and all that. I feared totally and I was in dark. 
and I was feeling suicidal. But then one day I sat in my in the terrace, and then I was looking at the mountains, and I was thinking, this isn't going to stop, and I'm not going to let it continue. And then um, I was thinking over a long time, and then suddenly I had I had this this thing. Let uh, let me fight. If I fight, I mean, the only thing I would they would do to me is harm me. But then my my pride shouldn't be harmed. I I need to put it a full stop because I'm a woman, and I need my dignity to be strengthened, and I need my pride to be not taken away. So I the next day what I did was I went to the computer. I typed all those names of those people who actually sexually harassed me, and then I put it on the college and I, I put it on the notice board and I locked the notice board. It was visible to all the students. Every faculty saw it. And then <clears throat> the change happened. You know, everybody began to read it, like question all those guys who did this to me. And then these guys were so embarrassed that from that day on, they never ever touched me or even spoke to me. They, nobody hurt me in any way rather than being angry, they were actually afraid because my voice was more powerful. And I think that is, that is something uh, which I would say that uh, is, is, uh, answers your question. Like yeah. how I changed that fear into pride. Mm -hmm. I'm happy uh, to share that with you. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a very empowering story and it's it's the you know it's the old thing about you know the the best way to stand up to a bully is to stand up to a bully well i'm glad that you you saw that and you moved on yeah. because now you're doing so much great for the community and your art i'm guessing those paintings behind you are yours they're beautiful yeah uh, it's actually um uh, work in progress uh-huh it's it's frida Kahlo. yes beautiful my favorite artist. I always love painting Frida. Uh -huh. um, it's actually a work in progress. It's a pop art. I do a lot of pop art paintings. Mm -hmm. And currently this is one of my work that I enjoy doing during my free time. Well, okay. thanks Palki for coming on regarding change and sharing your amazing inspirational story. And thanks for doing this work. You're creating this whole new world for transgender folks in India. And I'm sure you're gonna spread it out around the world too. I hope so. And I have a question for you. Uh -huh. um, you speak to a lot of people, a lot, many change makers, inspiring people. What is the one quality that you find um, in all of them common? Well, they're all curious. Uh, they have all been willing to take chances. They all have big hearts. Seems like the people that I that I reach out to to do this discussion with all really care about others. Caring, uh, wanting to make the world a better place. Those are the kind of people that I'm attracted to, that I want to get to know more about. I feel like that's what I'm trying to do, and I'm sort of trying to maybe shine a spotlight on people that are trying to make a difference in the world. It's a privilege for me to, to just have these conversations with change makers that are taking chances in their life and they're um, doing things for others. So I guess that's the okay. long answer to the short question. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a lovely answer. Thank you for sharing. I'm always curious to know what, are the, the, what is this common quality in all of us? Uh, that keeps us going. Thank you for sharing that. Well, thanks again for coming on regarding change. And I guess that'll do it for today. Um, for myself, Alison Whiteacre, and Kalki Subramaniam, we'll see you later. Bye, Kalki. Bye, and thank you, everyone, for listening to our interview. Thank you, Alison. Thank you so much. See you soon. Mm -hmm.